Right, so the fir very first thing we want to do is create the pitch and some goalposts with a little netting behind it. Um, so to start off with, we're going to re uh, we're going to use a library on the bottom left here. Now, most of the uh, building blocks that you need for your model will be found in the library, so it's good to get used to how this works. Uh, there are some preset models that you can choose from. Um, there are also some building blocks which are going to be crucial, and it's one of the first things we'll look at. Uh, there are some special blocks which are related to um, trans uh, transfer transferring and animating objects along the track. We won't be using those today, and you can actually um, easily search for, for models that you like. So if there's a particular item you're looking for and you can't find it, uh, type, a, type it into the search box, and if it's part of the library, it will come up. Uh, so for instance, if we want to complete these roads here, which at the moment are looking a bit um, dead ends, looking a bit like a dead end. We could search for blocks um, that relate to the road and we could end up finishing this little um, this little pathway here between these two roads. But we're not going to do that, we're going to go straight into building our pitch. Um, I'm not really too worried about the background for now. Uh, we're going to go into the building blocks on the bottom left. As you can see there are lots of two-dimensional shapes, there are some walls that are already preset with a um, with a face looking like bricks. Uh, there's a glass pane there, um, there's a square cube uh, block here which you can actually modify to be a flat square uh, or a three-dimensional object and there are lots of other three-dimensional shapes which you can use as building blocks to create uh, original models. In this one we're just going to take the flat two-dimensional square and we're going to place it right in the centre here. Uh, as you can see it's yellow and we get this nice little pop-up to allow us to transform now transformations can be done by rotating the uh, object. Uh, you can actually translate the model, so, so you can actually start to, to move it along the axis. Uh, remember this is three dimensional, so you've got X, Y, and Z, or X, Y, and Z. Uh, you can actually uh, slowly just lift the model if you just want to, to change the height. Sometimes that's um, an easier way rather than uh, using translation. And then you've got the scaling option here. <clears throat> Now, with, uh, with that in mind, let's, uh, let's just press the scale, hold it down, and then drag your mouse. Uh, and as you, find, uh, as you drag, you'll find that the square size increases until you actually can cover the whole surface area of your landscape. Uh, once you've done that, uh, it's a good idea to double click again. And now you get to see the properties. So we're now into the properties of the square, and you can see it's simply just called square. Um, we can call it pitch if we want to. So, so that we can identify it better as, a, as an object. Um, we don't need to go any, into any of these options here just now, but um, just to make it more realistic, I'm going to change the material. Um, and there are some um, basic colors here. You can also go into more customizable colors if you want to. In this instance, we just choose a nice green pitch. So let's choose that one in the middle. Uh, there is an opacity meter here. Um, we're not going to adjust the opacity for this one. We'll just leave it flat, 100% opacity. But if you did want to make things a bit more opaque, uh, you can uh, adjust that opacity meter on the bottom. Uh, and the last thing I'm going to ask you to do in this case is just lock that into place. Now, this is very important if you want objects to be static, fixed, and then not interfere with any more of your modeling. Okay, because it can become a bit frustrating if you're trying to move an object but you end up clicking on the backdrop or on the floor uh, and you end up dragging that out of place. So locking it is a good option to keep it um, fixed in one location and therefore you can adjust other models around it without affecting that particular model or, or object. Um, there are a few other options here and I'm, I'm sure um, once you get into uh, code spaces you'll learn how effective they can be. Uh, for creating more authentic looking models. In this case, uh, we're just going to use lock so that our grass pitch is in its place. And there you have it, you've got a nice background, you've now got a pitch in place. If you wanted to be a bit more uh, ad adventurous, you can actually go into um, uploading images of grass, which I, which I did for my model. Um, again, I'm not going to go into the details for that, but there is an upload option here, and it does allow you to upload images you can actually also search for web, um, for images on the web. So if you wanted to have a more authentic looking grass pitch, you could search for a grass image. <clears throat> and then you can see a few along the bottom here. You can scroll along until you find one that actually looks more realistically from a bird's eye point of view. Uh, there you go, there's a couple there. 
and you can use that as an alternative to just a flat solid green color uh, just to give it more authenticity be careful because uh, when it imports the graphics it will keep it to its resolution so if you scale things up and it's a small image you will get a sort of blurry uh, pixelized image that's why I, i'm just going to stick to the flat 2d shape uh, of the square for this one right <clears throat> let's move on to creating our goalposts 